Echoes. Echoes are one of the things that, in my opinion, make Withering Waves so good, so interesting, so fun. They make it different than many other titles. The idea of being a kind of miniature monster collector within a gotcha attack game is, I just like the concept. It's a lot of fun. It's also the thing that allows for a greater degree of individuality and specialization of each character. It's what makes my Baizai different than your Baizai, or my Mortifoy different than your Mortifoy. You know, it adds another level of interestingness and complexity to the game when a lot of the more grindy, stereotypical ways that this would have been done in other types of games are removed due to the gotcha elements. So, for those reasons, I adore Echoes, and due to my adoration of Echoes, I have been studying the ever-living shit out of them, trying to understand how to optimize them and create as many different builds using them as possible. And while my studies are still ongoing, I did discover something while working through the numbers that I think was interesting enough to bring to a video, to bring to y'all today. And that specifically is what I think is the best Echo for healer type build. Now, I will preface this video with I am talking about healer builds. This is not for anyone else. If you have a character that you like as a healer, that's what I'm talking about. If you have a character you like as a support, there's nothing wrong with using your Baizai as a support. In fact, that's a brilliant idea. It's just that's not what this video is about. This video is about your healers. So I appreciate, and in fact, I would love to hear the other builds you all are using with your echoes, but just keep in, keep in mind this video is meant for the healers. Um, so with no further delay, let's just get right into it. So to not beat around the bush, I think it's important that I quickly present my findings so that way that we don't, yep, don't have to go to the end of the video to find it. Um, I have found through my number crunching that the most useful echo for a player who is building a healing build is going to be either jump rock, fission jump rock, or cruise wing. The numbers more clearly point towards cruise wing, but I'll get into the numbers in a little bit. What I want to first start off is why I even thought of this. And that really boils down to what is the premise of a healer? The premise of a healer is to, in my opinion, be sent out to use its a bunch of abilities and fully restore your entire team so your teammates can be sent back in and you don't have to worry about healing them for another, let's say, 100 to 120 seconds. Uh, optimally, in certain types of fights, you don't have to hit them out again. Um, it depends how hard the difficulty is, but in a lot of fights you won't have to because you healed so much and you only really have to send them out once a fight. Due to that reason, in my opinion, the healer needs to be able to withstand kind of as a semi-tank for a decent amount of time. I would say between uh, one full cycle of their ability, which would be, you know, it could be up to 30 seconds, or even longer. Um, really, for the sake of this video, we're going to be focusing on around 60 seconds, uh, but you could go all the way up to 100 seconds, and that's still viable for a healer. As long as you're getting your team to 100% HP, uh, your, your healer should be staying out. During that time, your healer has to not die. It has to not take large amounts of damage. If your healer gets damaged and you have to heal your healer, then that's kind of a problem. So I was looking at that concept. I was thinking about, you know, I have this healer that I kind of want to protect. How do I do it? What do I do? And I went to the wiki and the wiki goes, oh, you know, pull out Bellborn. And I should preface, that's not a dreadful idea if you're doing a support build. Bellborn's concepts, for those who aren't aware, is that Bellborn will, when used, create a shield that can last three hits that will reduce 50% of your age of the damage received for each one of those hits. On top of that, Bellborn also does damage based off your defense stat, and that shield can be turned over to teammates. On paper, this is a phenomenal ability, and on practicality for support builds and many other types of builds like glacial damage, it is very good, and I will not sell it short. However, for healing builds, it isn't the best idea. And, and that's really something I'm going to have to pull the numbers to prove definitively. But at least in theory, let me try to explain where my realm of thought comes from. Fission Jump Rock and Cruise Wing are both echoes that do continuous healing, either 1.2% or 2% of HP every single time they are used. They are used much quicker than Bellborn. And on top of that continuous healing, that healing will occur irregardless of what's going on on the battlefield. So if you pull your healer all the way to the edge of the battlefield, you can still heal. With those things in mind, it is kind of like a, a battle between two different concepts. Reducing damage on the side of the Bellborn, or simply repairing the damage on the side of Fission Jump Rock and Cruise Wing. And 
that is kind of a, a di- not dynamic that, at least in my opinion, for healers, leans more towards healing the damage. As a healer, you are going to be healing large amounts of HP anyway. And on top of that large amounts of healing anyway, you are also going to have healing buffs. So it, at least to me, made more sense to switch out to a healer type echo rather than someone who reduces damage, because then you could spec your echoes to focus on buffing that healing. That is the theory. Time to look at the numbers. As in practicality, that is all that really matters. My theory versus yours is not all very useful until you actually go and interact with the world. Let's look at the numbers. The first graph I did was a damage over time. So on the x-axis, we have seconds from 0 to 100. As I said in the beginning of the video, optimally, you don't want to have your healer out to 100 seconds. It's really going to be like 60 seconds. But really, if you need it, uh, that is really why that's there. If you need your healer out that long, you should be able to do it. We can order this graph and kind of immediately take some takeaways. For players who bring their healer out for extremely short durations of time, we are talking sub-15 seconds. This is, you, you send your healer out, it uses all of its abilities, and then you send it back. Um, in which case, you're not getting full healing. Really, you're a support build at that point. Uh, Baizai, for, for, to just give an example, is not going to heal enough HP during that time to be um, viable. But if you do do this, if you use your support build as a support build, then we can definitely see Bellborn is better. It, it is scoring higher. It, it takes that early lead just being able to reduce the damage. However, as time goes on, Cruise Wing and Jump Rock take more and more of an advantage. Cruise Wing takes the early advantage due to having much less animation delays, but Jump Rock also does catch up with Cruise Wing. Uh, definitely by the end of the 48th second, you're going to see both of them per- outperforming Bellborn by not really low margins. Those margins get much higher as we move into the second half of the duration testing. So if you are keeping your healer out for, as I said, you're keeping your healer out to heal your whole team. Your healer is in the back of the fight. You have Baizai sending the cute little orange, I mean, a white dinosaur to beat people up. If you're keeping your Baizai out and you want her to heal and heal and heal, then it, the evidence definitely shows that if damage is constant, um, you're going to see both Jump Rock and Cruise Wing outperforming Bellborn. However, these conclusions kind of rely on a couple of factors. They rely on whatever numbers I'm assuming for damage and whatever rate of damage I'm assuming. And anyone in the comments can sprint up and go, well, you didn't consider for those things. But I did. So what I did is I did two more graphs. Uh, the second graph here is how, can, how long is the delay between getting hit? And you'll notice on the x-axis, there is in fact a cutoff at 7 you go, well, what if it's less than seven? What if I'm getting hit every less than seven seconds? Well, then you die. If you're getting hit every single second with any amount of damage, um, you're going to die. There's very few things that, that you'll survive. 100 seconds of damage every second. Uh, you really should reconsider your strategy. Seven is the survivable number. So meaning if over the course of, of, I think it's 100 seconds the test runs for, if over the course of 100 seconds, you're being hit on average every seven seconds, then in that case, the only situation you'd find yourself surviving in is if you had used Jump Rock or Cruise Wing. With those levels of delay, you just find that Bellborn isn't able to reduce damage enough. Now, realistically, no one should be getting hit every seven seconds. If you're having that much issues with dodge, maybe I can drop a tutorial for you, but I don't think seven seconds, that's kind of crazy. I don't even know if enemies attack that quick. But the point is, as we move uh, across the x-axis and we see longer and longer delays, if you're able to withstand greater amounts of time without getting hit, you find Jump Rock and Cruise Wing do far better than Bellborn does in, in mass healing. And that's simply because they can just keep healing. There is no lower limit. There is no upper limit for them. Um, and, and that's really beneficial for them. That is not true for Bellborn. Bellborn can only withstand damage. And, and that kind of definitely lowers the efficiency of Bellborn, uh, most certainly. And, and what it says here as well is that if you're a better player, this isn't a matter of if you're a bad player, you know, use these, these kind of cheap steak, uh, jump Rock and Cruise Wing to save you, it does show you that if you're a better player, the effects, the benefits of these two Echoes gets greater and greater. I will also note before anyone asks about it, you'll notice there are kind of odd little spikes for Bellborn. It goes spike up and then it goes down. 
That's because Bellborn as an ability does run out after 15 seconds. And that means that if enemies are hitting on certain seconds, um, I think just a five second window. I don't remember the exact size of the window. The, the math that I did in uh, JavaScript actually found the window. But if you get hit in those windows, you're taking full damage and you basically get none of the effects of Bellborn. Um, and that's definitely a, a kind of noticeable side effect. Finally, damage. How much damage is being done to you on each hit? So this assumes that if you have a constant delay between hits, you're getting hit, I think it's every 10 seconds, um, with a certain amount of damage, percent of HP, which of the three options is the best. And as we can see in this graph, Cruise Wing easily destroys the other two. That's not even a contest. It has a decent amount of margin, and that's because it heals a lot. And that really has to do with the fact that Jump Rock has such a small healing window and only heals for, I think it's like three ticks. It's actually atrocious. Um... As compared to Cruise Wing, which heals for a lot more due to a smaller core. But if you look at this graph, you can kind of see as we approach 52, that's 52 damage as in you're being hit for 52% of your HP every couple of seconds. That's a lot of damage. Um, <laughs> but if you're getting hit on that level, you do see that Bellborn kind of narrows its, its distance from uh, Jump Rock. And there's kind of a reason for that. And the reason is as damage gets greater, the efficiency of Bellborn, the amount of damage Bellborn is taking off gets also greater. And one of the big concerns for me, the reason I did this graph, was, well, is there a point, is there an amount of HP that it is, Bellborn does get better? Bellborn, like maybe for a boss, like a super powerful boss that hits you for like 75% of your HP, maybe Bellborn is better for that. And the problem I found consistently that these graphs demonstrated is that if you're getting hit that hard with a reasonable delay, you are dying. So Bellborn does become better for you, but not good enough to save you from death. And in those cases, none of them are useful. If you're dying, I'm not going to sit here and go, oh, Bellborn's good if you have negative 10 HP. That's, that's a lie to you and to myself. What the evidence really does show is, generally speaking, in most realistic situations, Jump Rock and Cruise Wing are outperforming Bellborn. And Cruise Wing's outperforming both of them by a long margin. And one last thing I want to address while we're here on the talk of how much damage. Somebody could mention that my delay is too short and that, that my delay, if my delay was longer, then Bellborn would be able to survive. And as of such, we wouldn't see them, Bellborn, only being better due to jump, uh, due to the negatives against Jump Rock. And that's not true. Uh, and that's kind of why I showed the delay map. As delay gets larger, so does the gap between Jump and uh, Bellborn. Which, again, kind of reiterates this whole dynamic going on. That Bellborn isn't exactly going to end up doing better. But that's all for this video. I know there's a lot of words, um, but I really wanted to prove the extent of the math I kind of did to formulate my conclusion regarding these three echoes. I think deeper analysis of echoes regarding different people's builds could be something very interesting for us as players of this game. And if it's something you'd like to see me do more of, feel free to give me ideas in the comments if you have any, or give a like and subscribe to see more. Um, if you'd like to join a Discord that talks about Withering Waves, I mean, mostly what we do is post pretty screenshots and talk about couples, but if you'd like that, VSL is also linked in my description. That is my Discord. With no other real things to talk about, I hope you all have enjoyed. This has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all next time.